So what I want to show y'all today is I really want to talk about iridology and uh talk about how the eyes is truly the window to the soul. Uh, I'm going to show y'all some techniques here for y'all can literally look in, look at y'all eyes and diagnose yourself and figure out, I don't care what's going on with your body, you will be able to look inside of your irises and figure out what's going on with your body. All right? So I'm going to let a few more people climb in and then we're going to go and get this started. But look, these are perfect and good techniques to show you how to self-diagnose yourself. Before you go to the doctor, before you go anywhere, you can look inside your eyes, take a picture of your eyes. You better apply these techniques and you will be able to see what's going on. All right. The uh, the, the technical term is iridology, but it don't have nothing to do with your ears. It's actually called iridology because we literally talking about your irises and looking at consistencies and inconsistencies and weaknesses, genetic weaknesses, strengths, and literally showing whether you are calcium deficiency, uh, whether you uh, then had STDs before. I mean, down to broken bones, down to whether you've been taking too many uh pharmaceutical medications and prescriptions you can see all of that through the eye y'all all right you can see all of that through the eye so the eyes is truly the windows to the soul all right so i just want to go through a few things with y'all y'all make sure that y'all are uh writing this down and y'all have something y'all can go back to all right y'all know how i do my little janky presentations <laughs> so let me uh log let me log out of this picture and log in and, and, and click on another one so if y'all ready to get it started y'all type in some nines we'll get it started We'll get it started. Type in some nines and let's go. And make sure y'all writing this stuff down, okay? We finna get into some deep stuff here where you can, like, go to your bathroom, take a picture of your eye, and look and see what's going on in your body yourself. And we finna prove this scientifically. It's, uh, it's out there. Everybody's talking about it but us. Why do everybody have our knowledge but us? We're the only people that have lost their knowledge that don't even have it no more. So I'm here to help us get it back. All right? So if y'all ready to get this started, Type in some nines. All right, let's do it. Let's get her done. All right, so I really want to start it off. We can start it off with these eyes right here. All right? All right, so look, these are eyes right here, right? Now, what you are actually looking at when you're looking at an eye, okay, this middle part, this black part right here is called the pupil. All right, the pupil. When you get into this part right here, y'all see this this little line right here? This little line. Let's let's just go a couple meters out. They call they literally call this the collarette, okay? Where where my marker's at. Then when you go out to this little tree-like thing that's going right here, this is literally called the pupillary sphincter, y'all. The pupillary sphincter. Okay? All this that I'm on now, where you see these rings at that's like a ring of a tree, we're gonna talk about that too. But these rings, wherever these rings at, this is actually called the iris, okay? And then the white part, of course, is called the uh, sclera. All right, we'll go through it one more time. The black part is the pupil. Write this stuff down because we finna go deep into this. Once we break this knowledge down, look, it's mind-blowing. And then, look, if you think I'm lying, test it yourself. Do everything I'm finna teach y'all today. Go to the bathroom and look at your own eyes and mark it down. It will be able to track your life since you came from your mother's womb. Because the eyes is literally the windows to the soul. Scientifically proven, y'all. All right, so this black part again. This is what you call the pupil. All right? Just go not even a half an inch out. You call this the what? Huh? You call that the correlate or the collarette. That's what they call it, the correlate or the collarette. When you see these little signs right here, they call this the pupillary sphincter. All this area right here is called the iris, where you see these tree rings at. And these tree rings are actually nerve rings due to stress, y'all. So if you have this in your eyes, you're very stressed out. All right, and we're going to talk about the color of them and all of that and how that correlate with your body, how you can even look inside your body to tell if you have herpes, parasites, I mean, all of that, all through the eyes, y'all. And then when you get to the white part, of course, that's called the uh, the scarella, the scarella, scarella, all right? Now, look, check this out. So the whole thing about eyes, the reason why you can look inside of your eyes and you can tell what's going on inside of your body, literally because your, your eyes have over 28 thousand nerve endings inside of them. All right, let me say that again. Your eyes have over 28,000 nerve endings. Do y'all know what that means? Okay, so 
you have a spinal cord, you have a central nervous system, right? All these nerves are embedded inside that spinal cord. Each nerve inside of your spinal cord that go out through your whole entire body, the ending of them end up in your eye. All right, the next part that you have that have over, over 23,000 nerve endings is your belly button. Why is that? Because it used to be attached to an umbilical cord, okay? The next one after that is your anus. So these are three places where you have a lot of nerve endings at. In your irises, or what we call your eyes, and your belly button, which used to be uh, connected to, to your, uh, your spiritual cord that was connected to your mother's, and in your anus, okay? These were most of these things are at. Now, what is the eye used for? The eyes is usually used for simple things like reflecting and stimulating light. Okay, seeing is a chemical process. Seeing, you're seeing through a lens that's seen in the back of your cere cerebellum that projects the image upside down and about time you looking at it in the back of your brain, it's looking right side up. Well, how are you seeing these things? It's reflected through light, y'all. Reflected through light, okay? So look, if your eyes, check this out, I'm trying to say this. So look, the, the extension of your nervous system is your eyes. It receives information and it reflects information. So when you're looking out into something and it downloads that database, it goes into the back of your cerebellum and you read it and that's how you read back out. Well, it also, if I look inside your eyes, I can read and reflect what's going on inside of your body. It's a mirror. That's why if you get a camera and you take the lens off and you look inside the lens, what do you see? You see a mirror. So I literally can look in the lenses of your eyes and it'll reflect everything that's going on throughout your whole entire body eternally and internally. Y'all think I'm lying? Look this stuff up. This is how deep this is. So the eyes are literally a window to the soul. And spiritually, when we do the spiritual readings over the eyes, you can tell if somebody's been touched some before. You can tell if somebody went through traumatic trauma and a whole lot of stress in their life. You can tell if somebody suffered from uh, chronic STDs. You can tell if somebody literally had masturbation problems. All these things. You can tell if somebody uh, is very tired and, and uh, you can tell if people are tough and don't like giving up. Somebody that just get, get through it. No matter what they're going through, all these things can be seen in the eye, whether we speak in uh, scientifically or spiritually, because the eyes are the window to the soul, period. All right, so now look, we done broke down the eyes and everything. Now, what I really want y'all to write down is, so the eyes are created from what you call the ectoderm. If y'all heard my last teaching, I was speaking about the ectoderm, the mesoderm, okay, all these derms. These are the things that are created when the embryonic cell is created, before the baby becomes a fetus and before it comes a, a newborn, uh, a newborn baby, it's an embryo, all right? This embryo, is where the eyes was made from, was made from the ectoderm, which is the same skin cells that the neural tube was created from, the same skin cells that the brain is created with, the same skin cells that the nervous system created with, the same skin cells that the glances are created with, teeth, enamel, skin, and your skin. So whenever something is wrong in your eyes, I'll be able to tell you what's going on in your brain. I'll be able to tell you what's going on inside your nervous system. I'll be able to tell you what's going on with your glances and which gland is down. I, I can be, I look, I can tell if you have bad teeth or not by looking in your eyes. And I can tell your skin. All right, if we got that so far, type in some nines, we're going to keep going. And if I need to slow down, let me know, family, because I'm here to teach y'all, but we can learn this knowledge before we can keep, quit going to these people and letting them kill us. So if, if y'all getting it so far, type in some nines. And for people that's just climbing in, not really, bro. What are you not getting, Lakeisha? What are you not getting? What are you not getting? Let me know. Let me know what are we not getting, then I can I can reiterate real quick. Because there's no point in me doing these, there's no point in me doing these, these, these classes if y'all not getting it. All right. Now again, this middle black part is called the pupil. Okay. You don't even have to go a half an inch out, not even a half an inch out. That's called the collarette. These little squiggly lines, even when you come over here on my left side of the screen, right? Well, y'all see my marker at. That is called the pupillary sphincter. This outside where all these rings at, back to my right side, this is called the iris, okay? And then this white part is called the sclera. Now, let's break this stuff down. I want to move on to another eye. 
Just another eye. I just want to show y'all different things. So, so far we got that the eyes was created to be extension of the nervous system. It was created for you to receive information through light and to reflect information through light. Okay, it's stimulated through light. Now I want to get into constitutions and genetic heritage because that's what we're going to talk about because I can see all your ancestors through your eyes. Okay, now we're going to break this eye down first. Now the thing about an eye, when you break down an eye, the eye is going to tell you everything. For one thing I want to break down, there is no such thing as green eyes. There is no such thing as gray eyes. Okay, there is no such thing as yellowish green eyes. There's only three eyes, period. Three eyes. The first eye is called, the first eye color is lymphatic blue, okay? There's a true lymphatic blue eye. The second color is called bilinary hazel blue, I mean hazel brown. So we got a blue eye that is a true eye. You have a hazel brown eye that is a true eye. The second one is called a hematogenic true brown eye, and you have a brown eye. So we have dark brown eyes, hazel eyes, and blue eyes. Any other eye color that you see is literally a genetic weakness. I'm sitting here and I'm stating that fact. That is a fact, y'all. Truth is, I learned a little bit about eyes and ears and sound waves. Yes, and we finna get into it right now, Queen. You see that? So you have the lymphatic blue eye. These are more in your Caucasians, okay? You see this in uh, certain areas in Africa where they got blind hair and blue eyes showing that they got the bloodline that they got in them. Okay, the other one is bilirary mixed hazel brown eyes. And then the next one you have is uh, homotogenetic true brown eyes. And that's your dark brown eyes, okay? That's period. So if you see any eyes that's gray, you see any eyes that's green, you see any eyes that's any color other than these colors that I just mentioned, they are either dealing with mineral deficiency, they are either dealing with bad livers, they are either dealing with uh, down kidneys, or they're dealing with a lot of sulfur and antibiotics. You can see all this in eyes, and it show up in the eyes. If you see a true hazel, that is a true eye. Right now, what we're looking at is a hazel eye. This is what you call a hazel eye that we're looking at. It's called a bilinary eye. OK, now we look at this. eye. The first thing somebody will tell you is it is beautiful. And I agree. It is. It looks very beautiful. No eyes are the same. All eyes have their own fingerprint on them. And that's how you able to read the inside of the body and read the central nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. That's how I'm able to tell you if your kidneys are up and down or not. But when you're looking at eyes, we're supposed to be looking for constitutions. OK, now, when you get into the word constitutions, Constitution is just showing you the genetic heritage of an eye. Let's pull up these true blue eyes real fast. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. All right. Now, when you're looking at a constitution, here go constitution right here. If you look at the left, and I'm looking at the screen. If you look at my left, right, where I have my marker at, this is a good constitutional eye. The reason why I say that is because the lines are very, very straight. It's called the tubercle eye. Y'all see these tubercular lines? It's like silky lines that's very, very close to each other. This means you have good eyes. This means you have good genetics. This means your ancestors were very, very healthy because you actually get your eyes passed down through your father's lineage. I'm not talking about the color. I'm talking about the constitutions. Now, if you look over to my right and look at this eye, the constitutions are very, very wide, very, very spread apart. Look like potholes is in the eye. This is an inconsistency in the genetic makeup, okay? So let's go back over to my left again. You see this silk-like things. The lines are very, very close together, okay? Now, when you get to the right, you see that the lines are not close together at all. Well, each eyes, or ha each eyes are created different due to what the mo mother was doing while you was in her stomach or doing before she even had you, what the father was doing before he actually ejaculated into the mother because the seed goes inside the mother, but that seed becomes the central nervous system. That seed, the head of that sperm becomes a mature brain. That spinal cord or what they call the tail of the sperm becomes the nervous system, created into a zoogite. That becomes the fetus or the embryo. The embryo becomes the fetus. The fetus becomes the infant. The infant becomes the toddler. The toddler becomes the, the child. The child grew up to be a human being. So you're literally getting your genetic makeup in your eyes from your ancestral tree. All right. Now, look, let's go back out. I want to explain a few things to y'all before we actually start breaking down these eyes. So when you look at the eyes, this is an iris. Now we see that it's a, a lot of different patterns that's going on when you look at an eye, okay? 
Now, if you look down in this area right here where my marker at, that's showing you that silk-like. This is marker one. When you see them lines very, very close together like that, that's showing that you have good genetics. Usually people like this don't get sick often, okay? Usually people like this don't get sick often, very few colds, never had chicken pox, flu, nothing like that. Now, when you get over into two, this is where it starts getting kind of bad at because now you're starting to see spaces in the eye, okay? Now, these spaces are called lacornia, lacona, I mean. Now, when you see laconas, that means that there's genetic gaps. And how you spell lacona is L-A-C-O-N-I-A. L-A-C-O-N-I-A. These, these openings I'm talking about. Whenever you see these opening, these are gaps between genetics. These are gaps between centuries. These are gaps between generations. These are supposed to be filled up, especially if they're real dark. But we're going to get into that too. So we looking at one, we see the silk like villi or uh, tuberculosis, tuber tuber tuberculosis in the uh, in the eye. Then you get to the second part. Now you seeing all these uh, laconias in the eyes, which is these potholes or these spaces. Now you get to three. Three is the same way. You get to four, five, and six. Now each eyes are actually woven in a different way. You see, you have the silk one. You have eyes that look like they're hard wood. You have eyes that look like they're very soft woods. You have eyes that look like they're burlap. And when you get into uh, so-called African-American eyes, we mostly look like we burlap eyes, or what they call velvet. And I'm going to show y'all that too. And it's amazing how all of our eyes look very different. And I'm not talking about the color because you only get three color eyes. You either blue, hazel brown, or dark brown. But when you, when you key in on them eyes with a microscope, our eyes is even woven and net and different from any other nation. You have medium wool, and then you have muslin. These are all your different assets. So look, when, whenever the gap get bigger, that means you have different dispensations in your eyes or different chronic disease. All right. Now, when your eyes start getting bad or your body start getting bad, you have something called acute. OK, acute means that you're just now starting to get bad. I'm going to spell that in here. OK, acute. I'm spelling it now, family. I just put that in the board. That's acute. Acute meaning you, you, you got a cold. Now you got the flu. The flu is called subacute. I'm putting it in there, y'all. Write all this down. Subacute. Now what subacute is meaning? Okay, now I don't have the I don't have the cold anymore. I don't got the flu. Okay. Now you moving on to a stage. Literally, once you get to the acute to the subacute, now you moving on to either greater stages, and this is called chronic. I'm putting that in there too. Chronic is when you really start seeing them black spots in the eye. That's chronic. That means you literally have something going on with inside of your cells. Chronic. Now, after it reached the chronic stage, if you haven't fixed it yet, because I'm showing you how to self-diagnose yourself right now, once it, got, once it leaves from chronic, it goes into degenerate. Degenerate literally means that your cellular tissues start breaking down. Well, guess what they call this in any laboratory? They're either going to call it HIV, AIDS, or cancer, y'all. And that's a degenerate stage. Degenerate. And if I spell it, if I ain't spelling it right, y'all, respell it for me. Degenerate. All right, so we got acute, we got subacute, we got chronic, and we got degenerate. That's what's going on. Now, let me walk it to you. Let me walk it to you. This is a perfect eye. Perfect eye in level one. Y'all see one? Let me blow it up for y'all. One perfect silk. The consultate the uh the consultations, I mean the constellations is is very, very, very perfect inside the eyes. Y'all see it? Then when you get to two, we start seeing acute going on here. We seeing gaps, we seeing black spots, we seeing holes inside the irises, looking like black holes in outer space, not filled with anything, full of void, full of misunderstanding, full of sofa, full of all these things that's not supposed to be happening. Then you go to three. All right, three. You getting into your subacute. We still see the uh, the the uh, the trepula, the treculosa in the eyes. We still see the we still see the uh, villi in the eyes. We still see the lines there, but they're bigger gaps. Then we going up into four. Now the gaps getting even bigger. You starting to lose the integrity of your eye. Now we getting into literally we we went went from subacute. Now we getting into chronic. Then you get to five. You see how spaced out these is. That then went from chronic to literally degenerative 
And then once you get to the degenerative, your last stage is what they call HIV, AIDS, and all that. You start seeing spots on the back of the tongue, a lymph nodes be swollen, popping, and all other things. All right, so look, now what we have to do is we have to apply this thing to the eyes. I want y'all look at something else too. All right. Now, this is showing y'all the colors of them too. Not only if you look down at this corner, the blacker it get, the more chunks are taken out of your iris. Y'all see that? The blacker it get, the more chunks are taken out of your iris. This is a half of iris right here. So when you see them deep, dark spots, that means there's literally pieces and chunks of your DNA and your protein or what they call simple amino acid structures or missing from the chain. And whenever you miss an amino acid structures, a sickness take place. So in order to figure out if it's a right or left eye, you always look at the pupil. The pupil will always be the closest to the nose. OK, so if we looking at the eye right here where I'm on. The pupil is actually closer to the nose, so this would be a left eye, okay? This will be a left eye. When you look at this one, it's actually closer to the nose, so this one would be a right eye. So this is a left eye, this is a right eye. I want to read the right eye first, which is what my mark is on, okay? I want to read a, a right eye first. Now, the thing, the beautiful thing about this is you read eyes like a clock. So 12 o'clock will be straight down, y'all. Y'all see my marker? 12 o'clock will be straight down. All right? Uh, I can actually draw on here. Okay. This is 12 o'clock. Okay? That's 12 o'clock. We always start at 6. We're going to always start at 6 o'clock and work our way around. 12. We're going to start at 6. So when you start at 6, you always look at the pupil first. We see the pupil. You see it's a little glare over this pupil. So this pupil look like it has an acute stage of what? Glaucoma. It have a glare over it. So now we know that it's something wrong with the pancreas. It's something wrong with the insulin production. It's something wrong with the blood sugar. Because we have a little glare over the iris. Make sure when you're looking in the mirror, you're looking for glares and stuff like that. Okay? Now we finna start looking at the actual pupil, because the pupil is directly connected to the central nervous system. We have to make sure that the pupil is not bleeding out into the collarette. Remember, this is the collarette right here. We got to make sure that that pupil is not bleeding out into the collarette. Now, if you actually look right here, we see that the pupil is bleeding out a little bit. It's supposed to be a fine circle right here, but we see the pupil is just bleeding out a little bit into the collarette. What do that mean? That means that the central nervous system is suppressed inside of the large intestine. Inside of the large intestine. So what makes me say that? The cholerate is this spot right here. This deals with your intestines. Okay? This deals with your stomach, I mean. So now we see that the central nervous system is infecting the stomach. This is stomach. All these grooves and all these lines are not supposed to be here like that. They're supposed to look silk-like or they're supposed to be woven real real tight and knitting real tight like velvet but in this particular clay case this is not okay so now when you're looking at the stomach you start finding these gashes or what or what we will call literally what we call uh la cornea this is what these gashes call when they get real bad they call it acute or subacute corneas la corneas we see that there's inconsistency within the integrity of her stomach so now we know that she got stomach problems this is a woman by the way she got stomach problems she, uh, she looked like she had acid problems. Look at them. So now, what, first thing I want to do is go down. I see the stomach's messed up. Let me go down at 6 o'clock. Let me see what's going on at 6 o'clock. When you actually get into the eye at 6 o'clock on the left eye, straight down is the thigh, the hip, and the bone and foot. We see that they had thigh, hip, and bone and foot injuries before. You see the lines, the grooves? And look how long it go. This is not supposed to uh, protrude outside of the uh, the pupillary sphincter, but it is. So they had they literally had thigh, knee, and hip problems before when you go down. And notice it cuts into these nerve rings. These things that you see that look like trees, tree rings, these are actually nerve rings. These are stress rings. Whenever anybody's eyes have rings around it, that is chronic stress, and it is suppressing the autonomic nervous system. Okay? 
So now we're looking at these eyes, and I'm starting at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock on the left eye, and it's showing you, okay? She most definitely has some thigh problems. She might have tore a, a heel, a tendons, or something. Something went wrong with her foot. Something went wrong with her thigh, her knee, and her foot, okay? That's what happened. We between 6 and 7 o'clock. Here goes 6 right here. This is going to be 7 right here, okay? Now, we're going to go a couple minutes over, and then we're going to check out her adrenals. Her adrenal glances is right here. Y'all see that? These are the adrenals. Do y'all see this gash? This means that her adrenals are very, very shot, and they look like they're hyperactive. Notice we see that black spot. We read that when you see a black spot, that means that it's in a, degener uh, a degenerative stage. Y'all see what's going on? So we looking at the adrenals, and I'm going to show y'all a cover, and I'm making my own cover, too, where y'all be able to actually go on my website and buy the, the, the things off of there. They're only going to be for like $5 or something like that. And you can print them out, and you can use these and mark on your eyes with her when we get our classes up and do our uh, ideology classes. Y'all get them for free. So look, check out her adrenals. So now we know she got adrenal problems. Well, what... What's your adrenals used for? They used for what? The top of your blood pressure? Meaning that she must have high blood pressure. She's dealing with some type of high blood pressure and is used for calcium utilization. So we know she's going to have some type of calcium deficiency or her thyroid gland is producing too much thyroid. I mean, too, too much thyroxin, which is producing too much calcium, which is going to strip out all the magnesium from her body. Okay? Now, Right down above the adrenals, we're going to look at the kidneys. So I don't really see any kidney marks in her. I see a little bit right here, meaning that it's mostly her adrenals, but the kidneys would be right here, y'all. You see a little bit, okay? I see a couple of uh, sporas. Spores are just little spots. A spore is right here. This is a spora. And what a spore means, a spore means toxicity uh, settlement or somebody that took drugs or something before. So if you look inside your eyes, here go another spora. Just little bitty black dots out of nowhere for no reason. Little bitty black dots. You know what I'm saying? Out of nowhere for no reason. Can you see the age in the eyes? Yes, you actually can. You can see the age in the eyes just like you can see the age on a tree by the nerve rings. By the nerve rings. So I can tell right here she's in her early 40s. Early 40s. Early 40s. You see that? So once we get right here... Now we are looking, okay, we see that she got black deposit spots, so what you call uh, sporas, okay? A lot of people call these sporas, and these are black spots, and these are toxic or toxicity settlements and drug use. And I, when I mean drug use, the body, don't look, the body look at cocaine and pharmaceutical medicine as the same thing, all right? The body look at cocaine and pharmaceutical medicine as the same thing. And when you see a lot of antibody, antibiotics built up in it, that's a lot of sulfur, you're going to look at more of a yellowish oranges color. More of a yellowish oranges color. All right? Let's keep going. 